Today, I'm going to tell you about one of my favorite results, Bell's theorem, that answers the EPR paradox. But instead of just proving the thing here, I've decided to push that back to next video and instead just tell you the results and explain what it actually means. That's because this is one of the most misunderstood theorems of science that I know of. I've heard it claimed by so many sources, from popular books to lecturers to serious research papers, that Bell's theorem proves quantum mechanics is right. Let's see if that's true. We've already seen that quantum mechanics has a few disturbing aspects. I'd argue that a lot of that comes down to one statement in quantum mechanics, the superposition principle. That is, that if we have a particle that could be in several states at a certain time, and we can't tell which one it's actually in, then it's in all those states at once. That means that while we have our backs turned, things act way differently to how they act when we're looking. But do we actually need to believe that? I mean, we can never, by definition, actually catch the objects in the act. The EPR paradox tried to prove that superposition is wrong. I won't go through the EPR argument in detail again, because you can just watch that video once more if you need a refresher. But remember for the EPR video, we had two entangled objects, and we knew one was red and the other white, but we didn't know which was which. Quantum mechanics insists that all possible things happen, so each particle is both red and white. But if we open one box and the object is white, then when we open the other, we must have the red object. The only way is if somehow or other, the particles can talk to each other. We'll call any theory where entangled particles are able to communicate while they're separated like this, a theory with talking particles. The EPR argument showed that if a theory has talking particles, then those messages are going faster than light. So what does this mean? If Einstein and the majority of physicists at the time were right and nothing can ever go faster than light, then EPR tells us that all theories with talking particles are wrong. That includes quantum mechanics. If nothing can truly go faster than light, then how do we explain the fact that entangled particles always have opposite colours to each other? They can't talk to each other while they're separated, as EPR shows, so they must decide which colours to be while they're still together. That means that instead of acting all crazy and going into superpositions while they're behind our backs, they instead act pretty normal with just one colour. So you see, if nothing can go faster than the speed of light, not only is quantum mechanics done for, we can go back to believing that the world isn't doing crazy things while we're not looking. I.e. if particles can't talk faster than light, then superposition is wrong. What about the other possibility? What if entangled particles do talk faster than light to each other? This is where lots of people get it wrong, so I urge you to be careful. If entangled particles do talk faster than light to each other, that doesn't necessarily imply that superposition is right. That would be like saying, if an animal is a raven, it is black, means that if an animal isn't a raven, then it's not black. That clearly isn't true. If an animal isn't a raven, all you can say is that it's not a raven. You can't infer anything about its colour. In the same way, if particles can talk faster than light, then all you can say is, they do talk faster than light. So finally, we get to the point. What is Bell's theorem? Bell came up with an experiment that would give different results in a world where particles can talk faster than light and in one where they couldn't. This got people really excited because this was a chance to disprove quantum mechanics. 15 years later, people finally came up with the technology to do the experiment. Their result? Particles do actually talk faster than light. Quantum mechanics survived. But, like I said before, this doesn't prove that quantum mechanics is right, only that it isn't wrong in this particular way. This brings up a lot of questions. Firstly, what about relativity? Remember that I told you that the biggest assumption in relativity is that nothing can go faster than the speed of light. But apparently that's not true. I don't know enough relativity to teach it to you, but in relativity, if it's possible for Alice to send Bob a message faster than light, then all kinds of crazy stuff can happen. For example, to some people, it will look like Bob gets Alice's message before she sends it. It's even possible for him to reply before she sends it. But then, 
what if she decides not to send her original message after all? This is an awful logical mess. So what's the solution? Physicists say that they have come up with it. They claim that it's impossible to manipulate our entangled talking particles to send the messages we want. This is called the no communication theorem. I don't know if we should just trust them though, so we'll have a closer look at it a little later. Another question is that, sure, this experiment doesn't prove that superposition is true, but is it really possible to explain all the weird experiments we've been talking about without it? Turns out it might be. There is at least one very promising alternative to quantum mechanics that does have talking particles, so it's not ruled out, but doesn't have superposition. It's called Bohmian Mechanics and I might make a video about it because it's pretty amazing. So that's the end of this video, but if you want to see how Bell's theorem proves that particles can talk faster than light, then I will be putting up videos about that very soon, hopefully. There will be one to explain something called spin and then the actual proof itself. If you don't know too much about spin, you should probably watch that one first.